When it comes to cognitive dissonance, people think cognitive dissonance only applies to circumstances where someone imagines a fake explanation just so they don't have to face something. And that's partially true. Cognitive dissonance, however, goes much deeper. And cognitive dissonance, when it's embedded in a group, it can have generational effects. So yes, cognitive dissonance can be transferred collectively from generation to generation. Let me explain. In the black community, at least, and it's not only in the black community, but in the black community, you have this expectation that children should never talk back to their parents. When the parent says something, the child has to remain silent and follow orders, as if they are in the military. What does this do to the child? The child grows up thinking, I'm not allowed to question authority. So what happens when a child is at school and a teacher gets out of line? They will not mention or give a hint that the teacher has been inappropriate with some of them. Why? Because they also experienced it. And then if they cause trouble at school, the parents would whip them. So the parents enforce violence on their child just to make society at ease. So the child gets the message, society is everything, society has to be pleased, I'm nothing. If I don't please society, I get harmed. So, a pattern in thinking is developed in which the child will put society above the child's well-being. So when the teacher gets out of line, the child won't even process that something went wrong. So, apart from the teacher, this will also extend to later at the workplace with employers. When the employer demands them to make extra hours, which will be at their own expense, expense of their own health, they will likely not say, oh, sir, I can't do that. My contract is for 36 hours. You want me to work more than 40 hours? That's not even allowed by law. I'm not going to do this. No, they'll get along because they're conditioned mentally to never question authority. And what happens if the country we live in is run by corrupt politicians who make policies that harm the community? They'll likely not want to even hear about it because they're still trapped in this pattern of never question authority. Why? Because society is everything and I'm nothing. That's how they've been conditioned. So what happens when those people have children? They will demand tribute from their children for how they think, for all their hard work, for pleased society. So, so now the same thing the parents did to him or to her, they will do to their own children. In the beginning, they're not aware of it, but after a while, they realize, what am I doing? Then there are two options. Either they repent and look for help, or they harden themselves and they turn into narcissists. And unfortunately, many parents turn into narcissists. So now, they were subjected to this as children, to this with their own children. Now, those children do the same thing also. That's how it goes from generation to generation. Cognitive dissonance comes down to you not being allowed to see an inconsistency for what it is. Example. Violence is bad. When children fight in school, they're stopped. They're not allowed to fight. They're supposed to cooperate, act peace with one another. But when the parent at home doesn't get what he or she wants, they're smacked or they're threatened. This is a contradiction. You tell children that you're not supposed to fight with one another, but then at home, you use that same thing on a child who can't fight back just to get what you want. This is a contradiction. Both cannot be true. Either you're allowed to fight and exploit others, or you're not supposed to do it. But they can't be both true. What, ha what happens now is that the child develops a pattern of avoidance in which you don't see it as wrong when someone with a rank fights them. Or when someone that's considered lower, where at the same level does it, now they see it for abuse or they see it for violence. So cognitive dissonance goes much deeper. So why is this important to understand? Because as believers, we have been conditioned into patterns of cognitive dissonance also. But we often don't see it for what it is. We don't see that we have toxic denial because the toxic denial is praised by society. 
Now, why did I give examples of children? Because that's where it begins. Look, in many cultures, not just, I use the example of the black community, but it happens in most uh, cultures. Children are not allowed to question their parents. Yes, children should co cooperate with their parents, because children don't have the mental capacity to do things on their own. That's why they need to get along with parents, that's obvious. And the parents should have, uh, the parents should have some authority over the child. In her profession, that's obvious, as long as the child is still a child. But the child must be taught by the community that if the child's instincts reveal that something is off, the child must be confident enough to voice it. The child must be confident to express when their intuition reveals on them that something is off. Because your intuition is part of your being as a human being. You have the intelligence. I mean the ratio, and you have the and you have the intuition. The intuition is quite important in your function in daily life. Once a child is discouraged from voicing their intuition, they're now mentally harmed because now they have to rely upon their ratio for everything, and the ratio doesn't fit in all situations. So that's how a lot of children are set up for developing mental disorders when they're later when they are older, I mean, when they are adults. So, why is it that in most cultures, children are not allowed to question their parents? A child is a child. If a child questions something, it should be very easy. Children are not, com are not that complex. They cannot come with manipulative tactics or anything like that. So if a child questions some things, you can easily explain why. The reason children are not allowed to question their parents is for the following. The moment you become confident as a child to question authority in a constructive way, you'll question all authority later in life. You'll question the school teacher, you'll question the politician, you'll question the police officer, you'll question everyone. And when you question everyone, you'll realize, hold on a minute, there are a lot of things here that they can't explain. There are a lot of things here that don't add up. And because things don't add up, and they can't explain it, you will likely say, I'm not getting along with this. But when you are trained to not question your parents, you will likely not question any authority at all. That's why children are rewarded for blind obedience to authority figures, and they're afflicted with harm when they dare to question something. There's a difference between teaching a child how to be appropriate when addressing people and conditioning a child not to think and not to examine. The moment that you teach a child not to think and not to examine, you are deforming that individual, which is child abuse actually. Why is it that there are so many adults that claim that they were raised by their parents and they end up well, yet they live in a society where the politicians are lying to them in their face and nobody does anything about it. How come the people in the community were raised, the majority of them, they were raised the right way and they end up well, yet there's so much uh, domestic violence in the community? A lot of adults don't want to process that they have been scammed by their communities while they were growing up. That's why they come with those fake reasons, okay, you can call them excuses, why? there are some certain defects happening in their lives in the communities. Because those defects and dysfunctions should reveal that they were not raised well and that they did not end up well. But to admit that would be too much. So, they'll come up with some excuse or they will blame the scapegoats so that they are left alone. Believers, we must unlearn all patterns of cognitive dissonance. Because cognitive dissonance is really you being trained not to think. That is what it is. And when you can't think, you can't examine, and you can't challenge. Because you can't think clearly. So, next time you hear people talk about cognitive dissonance, realize that it goes much deeper than just on an individual level. Cognitive dissonance is a cultural thing and it's also a generational thing. But we as believers, we must be free from those generational curses because they are curses. Okay? Children should be confident.
to voice their intuition, no matter whether end up being quote unquote wrong or not. And here's the thing, your intuition is always right. Your interpretation in your brain may be wrong. So children must be confident to voice their intuition. If they can't do that, that means they're not in a safe environment. And not growing up in a safe environment, you can force your intuition. It will lead to avoidance issues, will lead to codependency issues, it may lead to narcissistic tendencies, it may lead to a lot of stuff later in life. But when those other stuff manifest, now we want to fight them with therapy. No, why not start with the root by stop abusing children by telling them that they're not allowed to voice their intuition? Or why not, now those children are adults already, tell them the truth about the matter so they can heal? Look, I remember when I was growing up, sometimes I voiced my intuition, people didn't like it, people became upset. Even when I was later proven to be right, they would just remain silent. Why? Because it was a child that knows something. The as adults didn't. And a lot of people have this pride that they can't admit that a child was right and they as adults were wrong because they as adults were so into societal expectations. Now, I knew from a young age because of this that often people are in denial, people don't want to face things. But there are a lot of folks out there who just can't see this. And here's the thing. You can't be naive because you don't know any better. You can't be uh, in ignorance because you lack the proper knowledge. But there comes a point that your ignorance is a choice. There comes a point that your naivety is toxic because you just don't want to fix anything. When you reach that state, you begin to attract evil spirits. So, always be confident to acknowledge your intuition. Now, as an adult, you can't always voice your intuition, but at least acknowledge it internally. And don't ignore it, because it's quite important. Well, that's it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.